My name's Henry and I got 10 nines in my GCSEs, so a nine in every subject I took. Today I'm going to be explaining what I would do if I were into the summer preparing for GCSE, so going into year 11. This video is going to be split into two sections. Number one, I'm going to talk about what I did in that summer, and then number two, I'm going to be giving you my advice for what I would do if I could go back in time or if I was in your shoes. If you're new here, please make sure to subscribe. I do loads of revision videos. I have done loads of revision videos, including A-levels and GCSEs. That's what I'm going to do over the next year. And please also make sure to leave a like. I respond to any comments or any emails, so feel free to leave any questions you have. Okay, I'm going to get straight into this with my what I did in that summer. So in short, what I did from the summer of year 10 to 11 or going to GCSEs is absolutely zero work. I did no work. Um, there's nothing else to say really there. Like for me, I actually only started my revision to get all nines in November of year 11. So what I think that should show you guys is that it's very possible to revise hard kind of like I said in November onwards and you don't actually need to do any work so any work more than that more than nothing is going to be helpful there's no real pressure on this summer I do strongly believe that obviously though I was in a slightly different position to others because I I'd say I was at sort of sixes and fives at, at like a base level of six in most of my subjects so I was coming in from a bit of a stronger level those of you that are at a four you probably do want to put in some sort of work in this summer so that's what i did just for a bit of background like i said i literally just didn't do any revision at the start of year 11 i actually wasn't that focused on revision um i kind of had this this big i suddenly just it suddenly just hit me that i wanted to revise and do well and so that's what i did but yeah i did nothing so there's no pressure on this summer the second part of this video now i'm going to go in and i'm going to say what my advice is and what i would be doing if i were you and in your shoes so the most important thing I would be trying to do in this summer is getting to know your subjects and your exam boards and your papers. I think a lot of students, especially in year 11, just don't really know what they're going to be asked in their exam papers, what their exam boards are, any of that stuff. So what I would do is I would make sure you research all of your papers, all of your exam boards. Maybe you could write down your exam boards somewhere, but just make sure you know what your exam boards are and what sort of what your papers are like because like I said a lot of people don't know and that is an important step that shouldn't take too long you can literally google maths exam board maths and then the exam board that you are you can check your school or email your teachers to find out your exam board but that's going to be really helpful for you my second point that I would recommend is to kind of read and learn around your subjects a bit so try and develop some sort of interest in them what I mean by this is for example, for history or even science or loads of stuff, you could try to find a documentary or two to watch about it. That's a really good way to just warm up into your subjects for GCSE season. Reading books, if you do history, like I said, again, that's going to really help you. Or even in geography, there's loads of stuff you can do in terms of reading and watching documentaries and books or magazines. I read Science Focus magazine throughout most of year 11 and it really helped me develop an interest and aim for those higher grades because I just had a bit more of a scientific brain. So any reading, any even if it's a YouTube video on some history thing, anything like that is going to really help you. And that's kind of what I did actually in the summer, in both of the summers building up into my A-level first year and A-level second year. I would watch documentaries and I'd just display an interest in it. And that really helped slowly get me into the zone for exam season. My next piece of advice, for those that actually want to do some work, what I would recommend the strongest and what I think the best piece of advice is, is Seneca. So Seneca is an online website where it's kind of very interactive and they have courses for almost every single GCC subject on every single GCC exam board. For me, during GCC, Seneca was probably the way I revised the most. I spent hundreds of hours on Seneca across year 11. So what I would do is go to your course, make sure you add all your courses on Seneca. I've done a tutorial on Seneca. I'll link that as well. So you can have a look at that in the description. And yeah i'd maybe go through some courses anything you do on seneca is going to be so helpful because a lot of the time it just really comes back to you what you've learned in like year nine even year 10 and seneca really helps that so what i do like i said add seneca courses and go through any try and try and do a, t a chunk at a time but you could go through chemistry slowly do a couple a day one every day one every week 
anything you do on Seneca is going to be so helpful to you for that kind of recall in your head. So that's what I'd recommend in terms of actually doing some work. You could also do Quizlet or learn or write down any flashcards. Going into year 11, I had a couple history flashcards which were useful. So any flashcards you do is also going to be helpful. My final piece of advice is, well, I have two more pieces of advice. One final piece of advice is YouTube. So this is something as well, which I have learned in A-levels that I think is really important. I've just finished my A-levels. Any YouTube videos you watch, including revision YouTube, anything like that, is actually going to be helpful. You don't want to spend too much time on it. Obviously, you don't want to procrastinate by watching YouTube, but learning how to revise, learning around your subjects, all of that is going to help you. So taking some time to watch videos like this, other YouTubers as well do revision videos, I'll be doing loads, to just understand how you can revise and to hopefully go into GCC year with some structures in place or some ideas on how you're going to be revising. So this is productive, watching some YouTube videos, even if it's one a day, a couple a day, anything like that. If you're interested, you can search like how to get nine in maths. I've done videos on how to get nine in most subjects, and I'm going to be re going over them and uploading them in a high quality. But yeah, any YouTube, anything like that, it's actually helpful to learn how to revise because that's something that is very neglected. It's often you don't need to learn the subjects. It's actually better to learn how to revise those subjects, if that makes sense. Finally, one thing you can do that's really helpful that I would recommend, and to be honest, if I were to go back in year 10, I mean, the summer between year 10 and 11, I would actually do this. And this is daily maths. So there are two ways of doing this, and you should probably do both, actually. Number one is Corbett Maths 5 a day. I'll link this in the description. You can buy books to this. You may have seen this, but Corbett Maths 5 a day is just five maths questions. You can choose different tiers to so what you're aiming for. If you do maybe three of these a week or one of these a day, you will get really good at maths by the end of summer. And it just hits you with all sorts of questions. It's really, really helpful. My second way that I would really recommend of doing daily maths is brilliant. And this brings me on to the sponsor of today's video. So thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video. So Brilliant is a way of learning maths and science. And what Brilliant does so well is utilise interactivity. All of Brilliant's courses are hyper interactive and it's really useful for doing bite-sized amounts of maths daily. Unlike Corbin Maths, which is on paper, Brilliant is online, so you can do it everywhere, on your phone, anything like that. And they email you as well if you're going to lose your streak. So there's quite a lot of motivation in gaining a streak. And Brilliant has actually been proven to be six times more effective in learning maths. I've used Brilliant myself. It's very useful. I love the bite-sized courses. One I'd recommend is Everyday Math. So what you could do as well is sign up to Brilliant, get a course on Everyday Math, and just do this once a day and you'll slowly learn and it really helps you understand maths more. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days and get 20% off a premium annual subscription, visit brilliant.org forward slash Henry Brand or click on the link in the description. So go sign up to this now, start doing this daily and you'll see your maths improve. I hope that video was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. I'll be doing loads more GCSE videos, lots of A-level videos too for the future. And yeah, just leave any comments in the description and I will make sure I respond to all of them.